people, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Well, you ain't that special, are you? Otherwise, you'd have come the other day on April the 7th, 1875. You'd have come for the launch of HMS Alexandra. But you didn't bother, did you? Getting your hair done, were you? Having a bit of lunch. Mm. Well, on that day, sir, not today. Ain't lunch time today, is it? Now nah, then, well, let me tell you, I know you lot weren't here, cos I was. And the reason I worked and even offered to work, which is in fact unheard of, is because I figured if I take 3,000 people around here, I might find myself husband. You see, I am a widow. Excuse me a minute, I've got somebody else looking for husband and all. Oh. Hello. No, I won't bother. <laughs> no, don't come in here, madam, looking for competition. You know what I mean? Did you see any you fancy? No. Oh, that one, he looks alright. You okay? How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very oh, sorry. How old they are, love? You've got to worry about how much money they bring in. Yeah. Yeah. No. Age don't matter. Thank you very much it's for your money. Help. That matters. <laughs> now then, anyway, like I said, the reason I'm in fact for her husband is because I'm a widow. And that's why I took them 3,000 people around. I figured if you take 3,000 people around, you might find one. I got tired and went home and just say so you're aware I'm still looking. And sir, I do notice you ain't got a ring on that finger. <laughs> on your wedding finger, sir. No, so this could be your lucky day. <laughs> 55 years married. Yeah, no ring, sir. No ring. No bond, no marriage. <laughs> so like I said, this could be your lucky day. <laughs> Now look, we have been making Rover here for a very long time, in fact since 1618. Would have uh, made it outside in all the weather, so if it had rained, you'd have got wet. If it snowed, you'd have got cold and wet. And then what happened was they took pity on their men and gave them a wooden shed to make their rope in. And then King George III, he turned up here and he fell in love with the yard. He loved it so much, he gave them a lot of money. And with that lot of money, he built what you're sitting and standing in now. It's called a double brick road house. It's this building here. It's the longest building in Europe. Quarter mile long, that is. Are you impressed? Yes. Yeah, that's because you like got to keep walking it, isn't it? <laughs> now, look, before I take you anywhere, I've got to know something. Got any combustibles on you? Matches, lighters, girls, you got any pipes? <laughs> you see, you go through there, even think about lining up my governor and I. And here, have you arrested, he will. And you know what you'd be charged with, didn't you? My wife's always staring at me. Oh. Well, sir, so you'd be done for treason. And do you know the punishment for treason? Yes. It's death by a rope. And I've got the very bit out there that'll do that, job. <laughs> Play up, though, and you can make your own bit. And you'll make it wrong, wouldn't you? And then you'll just swing round and round and round. You'll feel dizzy before you die. <laughs> oh. Come on, Aria. Now then, look, this is HMS Victory. And she is a glorious ship, is she not? Why is she glorious? It looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> it looks nice. <laughs> she's big. Oh, I don't care about Nelson. Why do you think she's glorious? <coughs> she's got great she's more than She's a chat and built ship. Indeed, sir, she is. And I can tell you, we got good thoughts for her. Oh, well, sadly I do foresee she'll end up in a dusty little yard just down the road. Now then, oh, don't swear at me. <laughs> <laughs> now let me tell you, a ship like this has got a lot of mile of rope, is not it? How many mile of rope does a ship like that got? 31. Look at that, readers in the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, are you married? Because a man. <laughs> have you got a ring on your fingers, more than a boy? I have. <laughs> not as he. His is in the cupboard. <laughs> Well, that means that he don't want to be married to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now then, in a month, that 31 mile of rope, you've got all the rope and you've got a shroud laid rope. In fact, there's only one bit of rope on there that is actually called rope. Now, what do you reckon that's attached to? It ain't the anchor. Um, <laughs> shit. Sorry, sir? Is it shit? No. But good guess. It's a noisy little thing. The bell, the bell rope. Other than that, it's also rope and shroud, eh? Now, 100 years ago, there were a lot of wars, weren't there? American War of Independence, French Revolution, Seven Year War, Napoleonic War. War after war, man, ship after ship. Ship after ship, man, rope after rope. Good hard work for good, strong men. Real men. Now, under the good Queen Victoria's under the day, I live a very happy and peaceful life. 
And I know that shows upon my face. I'm up here. <laughs> No, then this bit of over here, this is an anchor cable. Not only was it made well, but it was dipped in tar. So when it got dipped in tar, it made it waterproof. And that meant when it sat in the bottom of the water for over 100 years, it didn't really work that much. This come off a rather nice ship he did, called HMS Invincible. Now that were badly named, wasn't it? Now <laughs> <laughs> in amongst that 31 mile of rope, you've got hammocks, didn't you? They've got rope. Buckets, they've got rope. But what ass might need to be roped down? Okay. Do you know why, sir? Um, There's a name that I'm looking for. It's a thing called recoil. You see, you fire a can of board, it'll fly back and stick oh, in your ship, wouldn't it? And then when I say little powder monkey, shove it in the hole, plug it up. <laughs> Do you want it, John? <laughs> <laughs> Now look, my old governor, he gave me some rope this morning. He said I was like a loose cannon. <laughs> Come around here. <laughs> now then, most rope is made out of a stuff called them, and then come off a little plant you will have only heard of, called the cannabis plant. Only the stem, mind you, we throw the leaves away, I ain't found a use for them yet. <laughs> and then it gets stumped on the side of a dock now. A very clever man called a parter goes down onto the dock side. Before he does anything else, he ties the bottom of his trans legs like a bit of string. Now, why do you reckon he might do that? Stop the rats. Rats, mice, spiders, <laughs> bugs, clawing up your legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice thought for later, isn't it? And then they get on his hands and knees and they part it all. And what he's looking for is dry hemp. You see, dry hemp is good hemp. Damp hemp is bad hemp because that will rot just like a compost heap and will eventually combust. Don't want to fire at the rope me now, do we? Over here. Now then, to make rope, he takes a wheel of men and he takes 31 men to make up that wheel. You've got four <coughs> antennas. Now that is a very exciting job. I'll uh, show you that. You've all won that one. One M carrier, I reckon you'd be M carrier, sir. Carrying them big bells up and down the yard. Two, uh, four ass boys, now that'd be you two. Now what do you reckon your job as ass boy would be? Clean the No, because that would be, well it'd be a labourer's job, wouldn't it? And that ain't like where you're at, is it? I'll tell you the job and you tell me if you're up to it, yeah? Yeah? You do what you're told, <laughs> when you're told, how <laughs> you're told, and you wouldn't answer back. But that's you two unemployed, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got two wheel turners, another <coughs> very exciting job, and then spinners. Gents, can I see your hands? Hold your hands up, and the other one, sir, don't be shy. <laughs> Look at that, no ring, you'd be uh, M carrier, sir. <laughs> No ring there, no ring there, both M carriers. Sir, can I see your hands? And the other one. You be M carrier, and I know there's no ring there, so now I've got choice. <laughs> sir, can I see your hands? M carrier, <coughs> M carrier, sir, still no rings. Sir, can I see You've your hands? You've already detailed me off. And the other one. Look, see, M carrier, no ring. No M carrier, <laughs> M carrier, M carrier. M carrier, M carrier. <laughs> now what I'm looking for is a man with long, thin fingers so he can spin fibre in the yarn real quick. Now I ain't looking at him for like, you know, because of his fingers really. It's because he's a set nice paid man in the dockyard. <laughs> Only other man to be paid more is a shipwright himself. I best marry him quick though, because he'll be unemployed in a minute. Come down here. So he comes off all over from Russia off the cannabis <coughs> Dumped on the side of a dock. Now then. Remember this, right? Because there'd be a test at the end. Because to understand rope, you've got to understand the anatomy of rope, haven't you? So it comes in as fibre. Gets twisted into yarn, lots of yarn together becomes a strand. Now the bigger the piece of rope, the more yarn to be the weaker strand. Put three strands together, that give you all the rope. Now all the ropes for the running rigging, hammocks, anything pliable. Put three all the ropes together, that you and eight cable. Now an eight cable is in fact the largest bit of rope any rope we will ever make. If you take a ship like HMS Victory, she's got seven anchor cables. 
Some of them are so large that as I mean twisted and turned them by hand, they would burst blood vessels out of the neck and out of the head. And as they drop to the ground, you kick him out of the way or just step over him. After all, the man that can't work, though. Now, if you put four strands together, that give you shroud laid rope. And that's for the standing rigging. So now you know how to make rope, didn't you? How'd you make rope? That's what I thought. Come up. <laughs> now then, the fibres get brought into the actual in house. We're an actual, take natural, and actually in the actual in house. Now, what that really means, he takes the fibres and he combs it. And he combs it. And he combs it. And he combs it. He combs it. It's about 14 hour a day. Now, what he do before he does any of that combing is he'll add same to it, make it easier to comb. Like what you might put in your hair, girls. So what do you put in your hair to make it easier to comb? Oil. About a pint of whale oil. Not only will it make it nice and easy to comb, but it won't rot while it's turning into a uh, rope. So I'm helping you out then, our girls. Get a bad day a day, get a bit of whale oil, that sort of <laughs> Now then, once it's all been combed out, it gets put into poundage of 68, where it's wrapped around our spinner's waist and across these shoulders. We're going over here. Now then, this man here, he's called a wheel turn, and what he does all day long is he turns the wheel. And that in turn turns these hooks. Now, our spinner with his six eight pounds worth of weight wrapped round him, what he do is he tie them fibres onto that hook and he walks backwards, teasing it around his waist and across his shoulder. He go all the way down the rope, walk, turn around, walk all the way back, quarter mile each way, always backwards. Now, how long do you reckon it take him to do a thousand feet spinning fibre into your arm, walking backwards? No guesses? It'll take him 12 minutes. 12 minutes, a good spinner on a good day can do five mile a day. He's a talented man and he's paid well for it. You see, he, he's old. Five and eight. Five and eight, can you imagine being paid five and eight? You get a man who comes round here, he sweeps up and he's called Labourer and what he's on is two and eight. Now what happened was the Board of Average, they went up north, they didn't they, found a mechanisation of that and machinery and women were making cotton much faster and indeed much cheaper. So they brought that idea down here, they did, that's how comes our skills can work in here. Now I'm moaning, but I do the work of 24 men, 24. So if I'm doing the work of 24 men all on five and eight, then surely I should be on half, shouldn't I? <laughs> Come over here. <laughs> Now, in 1864, all the skilled spinners put out work having to find other work outside the dockyard or taking on a much less paid job such as a labourer. Now, I've got to be honest, we don't look very happy there, do we? We really don't. And that's because we just found out he's on five and eight. And do you know what they pay me? One and eight. And do you know why they only pay me one and eight? They're not working anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen up, sir. It's because I'm a woman. And I hate to put it on you, sir, but I reckon one day women will rule the country. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting it out there. Now, it is because I'm a woman. And my old governor, oddly enough, sir, he don't think I'm worth that neither. But I do believe that one day women will have equal pay and equal rights. And they really will run the country. Now, let me tell you, you can't just turn up and get a job in here, you know. Oh, no. There is, in fact, a criteria you have to meet. And I do, in fact, meet that very criteria. Firstly, your husband had to have upped and died. Mine did, in fact, up and die. Secondly, he had to leave me the paperwork to prove that he was once here and worked in this yard. Well, that's all about he did leave me. Luckily for me, his old shirt seems to fit, as does his boots. Oh, and had seven children. That could be our seven children, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me tell you, it is heavy work in here. It ain't as when heavy as when amended it. What they do on the roof walk, which is just between <coughs> where the double door is down there. So down at the far end of the rope walk, you've got a standing frame like this one, three separate hooks on it, doesn't move at all, it's just static. Then at this end, you've got the this moves up and down the rope walk, so the distance in between is a quarter of a mile. So you start off with the yarns, you have three yarns here, three and that's the minimum you can have. If you want a much thicker rope, you just keep adding yarns to the strand. But we're making just a very small rope, so 
twist these together, it's called hardening the strands. Once that's done, you put, when they're at the right tension, you transfer all three onto the middle hook. Then we get this top here. It's just a cone-shaped piece of wood with grooves in. This goes in between the strands and the rope closing force stitch to far edge. Very simple process. It's very hard work if you were doing that all day. So I need some volunteers now to do the work. <coughs> you a volunteer? <laughs> That's great. Stand up. Thank you very much. I need two more. Boys, do you want to have a go? Okay, stand up then. You should have plenty of energy. Okay, so if you'd like to go on the turning handle down that end. Sure. Yeah. If you could do this one. Now, are you good at creating a tension? Yeah. You're not? You're going to be good at this job. I'll show you what to do. <coughs> You're going to turn the handle. You can swap halfway through if you want to. But I want you to come and hold this rope for me. So if you put down this chair there. Don't do it yet, though. I'll start as I tell you. Now, all you have to do is hold this in a straight line. But you have to keep that support. Okay? Now, once they start turning the handles, those strands are going to tighten up and get shorter. So, once you see the wheels moving forward,
while I check to see if you've done a good job. Okay? <coughs> Have a sit down. Right. Now I've taken the ends off, and what they would use are bits of string to tie the ends off. a lot of smuggling went on down here in the old days, you know, um, because the, the workers were so poor they couldn't even afford to buy a length of rope, so what they would do is they'd smuggle it out onto their big baggy overalls. So a couple of the women would get together, the very slim one would coil it from the waist up, put the overall over the top to hide it, and then her friend, the good looking one, would go and chat to the guard on the gate while she walked off out twice the size she came in. <laughs> Oh. Did Vicky tell you about the rope's yarn? No. All right, so every rope made of chatham had a rope's yarn in the middle, which is yellow for chatham. And of course, if you stole the rope, that's how they, they could identify their own ropes. Um, you had Portsmouth, Plymouth, Woolwich and Chatham all making rope for the Navy. So they had to identify their own ropes just in case the rope broke they wanted to replace it. Now I'm taking it off for the workers. That's all you're going to get today. No money, just a piece of old rope to take home. Okay, so I'm going to cut this now and it should lie nice and flat on the floor if you've made a good piece of rope. It looks pretty good. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely yeah, perfect. Now the other way of checking it is if it stands up by itself. Oh, look at that. So you did a good job with the tension. Well done. What it really means to live like golden